Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you could make it. Today on Celebrate Sausage, we're going to be making the German Frankfurter. Stay tuned. <laughs> Frankfurter is processed in such a way where it's chopped so finely, the fat and the protein are indistinguishable from each other. Frankfurters are small diameter sausages normally put into sheep casings, then poached. But you can easily grill or smoke a Frankfurter. A properly made Frankfurter is going to deliver a perfect snap, a juicy bite, and an incredible texture. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how we make a German Frankfurter. Let's take a look at what we're working with. We've got some lean beef. I'm going to be using eye of round. I've got some pork back fat and some pork shoulder. Now, this is an emulsified sausage, so we're going to process it a little differently. But the first thing I'm going to do is chill it. And then once it's properly chilled, I'm going to grind it. When making an emulsified sausage, you want to grind your fat and your beef separately. So the first thing we're going to do is grind our very chilled fat on a 10 millimeter plate. And then we're going to come back and grind our beef and pork on a 10 millimeter plate. I'm gonna keep my fat and meat separate through this entire process. And this is what it looks like after the first grind. Now, I'm gonna regrind this on a six millimeter plate, but I wanna make sure that it's rechilled and almost frozen uh, when I do that. It grinds much, much easier when it's partially frozen. So this is our meat first on a six millimeter plate, and this is our back fat on a six millimeter plate. As soon as we're done grinding, we're gonna add the salt that the recipe calls for to the meat only. The salt is going to help extract the protein called myosin, and myosin is responsible for allowing the fat and the water to bind together, creating a nice emulsion. I want you to see how loose my meat is at this stage as I'm mixing in my salt, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this, mix it well, make sure it's well incorporated, and then we're going to stick it in the refrigerator overnight. This is going to allow that protein to get extracted, and it's going to make for a beautiful emulsified sausage. We're going to be making this sausage in our food processor, and you want to make sure that your food processor has a strong motor and really sharp cutting blades. Uh, we don't want to whip our meat. We want to cut it. All right, so look at, look at the meat overnight. Look how it's no longer loose. It's actually bound together, and that's a direct result from the salt that we added yesterday. Now, we've got a lot of protein already extracted, but by chopping it up into finer particles, we're going to extract even more protein, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Our meat temperature is in the low 30s, and now it's time to go ahead and chop our meat. Protein is extracted from meat most efficiently under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So during this cutting process of the meat, you want to make sure you keep your meat's temperature really cold. An easy way to do that is to add one third of your ice during the chopping process. If your meat happens to get into the mid 40s during this chopping process, that's okay, but we do want to try to keep it under 40 degrees for as long as possible. Once you've got your meat chopped up into a fine paste, it's now time to add more ice, our fat, and the rest of our seasonings. The ice is going to keep the temperature low, and during this particular step, we're going to be chopping the entire mixture until it's one homogenous mass. We shouldn't be able to differentiate protein from fat after we're done with this step. The ice is going to keep everything very cold, and it's important to know that during this final chopping, you want to keep your overall meat temperature under 58 degrees, roughly between 55 and 56 degrees. So halfway through the chopping process, we're going to add the last bit of ice that's remaining, and this is what our meat paste should look like. It should be very smooth, and now it's ready to put into sheep casing. We get our sheep casings from the sausage maker, and they have three different sizes. What's more important to know, though, is that they are double A grade casings, which means they are perfect for emulsified sausage. And that's really what you want. You want the highest quality casing you can get your hands on. We're going to be using a 22 24 millimeter casing and after being properly soaked we're just going to go ahead and put that onto our stuffing horn and push that casing as far forward as we can that's going to reduce casing blowout we're going to allow that mincemeat to just pull the casing directly off the horn that's going to ensure that it's not too too tight which is going to allow us to link it up better here in a minute this is what our sausage looks like and i gotta admit i think they look beautiful and we're now going to go ahead and link these up so to get a more in-depth tutorial on how to link your sausage properly. Be sure to check out the video, How to Stuff Your Sausage. We cover all of that in much greater detail. So our sausage is now linked. You can tell just by looking at it, we've got a really nice, smooth meat paste. There's really no fat particles that can be seen. And we're gonna go ahead 
and place this in the refrigerator overnight. It's totally optional because you could poach these right now, but I like the way the casing dries up a little bit and it develops the flavor. The temperature of our water needs to be between 170 and 176. And remember, we poach our sausage for one minute for every millimeter that our sausage is wide. This is a 22, 24 millimeter casing. So we're gonna poach these for 22 to 24 minutes. It's now been poached properly. They look great, and we're gonna go ahead and cool them off very quickly. This is gonna stop the cooking process, and at this point, you can refrigerate it or freeze it. Now, I do wanna say that if the water that you poached your sausages in is full of oil, that means your emulsion broke, and you'll probably have to try again. This is what our frankfurters look like, and so far, they look great. The sheep casing has adhered to the sausage perfectly. When I slice into it, I've got a nice, smooth slice. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside. Look at that sausage. Doesn't that just look absolutely amazing? If you like hot dogs, you'll love a Frankfurter. This is like a gourmet hot dog. I mean, it really stands alone in, in its category. The texture feels great. It's got a nice springy touch to it. Uh, let's go ahead and taste it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's, it's perfect. The seasoning level, the texture, the snap. So far, one of my absolute favorite sausages this year on Celebrate Sausage is the German Frankfurter. Not only does it deliver incredible flavor, but the texture and that snap that you get when you bite into it, amazing. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like the recipe for this German Frankfurter, check out the description box below. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Tomorrow, we've got a very, very special video. We've got a special YouTube guest that's gonna be joining us, who's gonna be making sausage for the very first time. Same time, same place, here on Celebrate Sausage. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.